Hey guys, I wanted to hop on and do a quick tutorial about um, glazing and root touch-ups. If you bought the touch-up kit or a glaze, um, this should be pretty helpful. Um, it's really easy. It's really something that you can do on your own. Like I'm not too worried about anyone like messing this up or anything. It's really different than like highlights. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you guys is what comes with the kit. So that way you're all aware of like each item that you're going to be getting. Um, if I'm out of breath, it's just because I'm pregnant and I'm like always out of breath right now. So um, let me show you guys first the items that come in the kit and what you'll receive and everything. And then I'll show you guys how to do a root touch up. So in your kit, you're going to get a brush to apply the color. You'll get the color tube. Um, some people will have two tubes of color um, just because I'm like custom mixing them. So like for my hair, um, I'm just going to use this one. But if you have two different tubes of color, that means I just customize yours a little bit differently. So um, there's nothing to be worried about with that. Um, you'll just mix them equally. And then you'll get gloves. Um, you'll need clips. Whatever kind of clip you have is fine. These are really great because they hold a lot of hair. Um, but if you don't have a clip like that, it's okay. You will want to use some sort of clip though. So here is an example of like a formulation guide that we have. So this is a client that has two different tubes of color. Um, she has gray, so she's going to be mixing these and she'll be doing a gray touch up with this. Um, it has directions here, so you'll mix both tubes of color and add the developer. So basically you'll open this color. I already put my developer in my cup um, just because I, I had it already, but you'll get cups like this with lids on them with the exact amount of developer that you'll need. So basically you're going to mix this with this. And some people will have two cups, some people will have three, um, but basically all you're gonna do is open up this box you'll put it into an empty cup like this, and then you'll take the developer that you'll have pre-measured for you, and then you'll just pour it in like this. Um, so basically you're just mixing developer and color together. Um, you can mix it up with a brush like this if you want. It's kind of big, so if you have like a Q-tip or like a whisk or just anything that can easily mix it up, that might be a little bit easier for you. Um, let's see, what else? You'll mix it up and you'll want to immediately apply that. Um, it's really easy. There's, It's already going to be pre-measured. So you're literally just going to take this entire tube of color and put the developer that I gave you, mix it together, and then you'll start applying it. Um, on your instruction kit, it's also going to have little instructions like, for this client, since she has gray, she's going to start at her front hairline and it's going to process for 45 minutes. All right, so I have a towel around my neck here and I just used a clip to clip it out of the way. Um, if you're using a dark color, you definitely want to do this. Wear like an old shirt. I have a towel down like on my sink here so that I don't get color anywhere too. Um, Cause it can get kind of messy. So you definitely don't want color everywhere, especially if you're using a dark color. Uh, lighter colors should be okay, but you still don't want to take the chance of it like getting on your shirt or anything. So definitely just put a towel on, um, use an old towel because it will stain your towel. So you don't want to use like a light color, but like a nice towel or anything like that. Um, put your gloves on. So I have gloves and then you'll mix up the color. And like I said, use um, like a Q-tip or just something kind of small to mix it up with because you don't want to get color all over this brush so that you're like getting it, dragging it down too far like this. Just use something small like a whisk, um, I'm trying to think like what else you can use at home that's creative. At the salon we have like whisks that we use. So um, just anything like that will be good. Like a Q-tip will work too. Um, so let me mix up the color and then I will show you how to put it on. So I have my developer in here and I'm just gonna start pouring this all the way in with the developer. You, if you have like a key, I am, oh, I'm really like OCD. So I have one of these keys for my toothpaste. Um, but this is something that we use at the salon. If you have anything like that, that will help you really get all of the color out. Um, if you don't have anything like that, it's okay. You just won't get like every last drop of color. So it's okay if you can't do that, but just try to squeeze out as much as you can, just like you would with like toothpaste or something. So I have all of that mixed in there like this. So you have the developer and the color. And then I'm just gonna use a toothpick to stir, or a yeah, Q-tip to stir it up. And it works 
pretty well here. It just takes a little bit longer, but you just don't want, especially for gray touch-ups, for glazes, it's fine. It doesn't matter if it's messy, if it's all over your brush, but for gray retouches, you really want to stay where your gray is. So you don't want to drag the color through. Um, this is kind of like a pretend root touch-up because I don't have gray. So I'm just going to show you what I would do if I did have gray. So let's say my gray is to like right here. From here to here, I have gray. And then from here down is your color. You don't want to take the brush and pull it down through where the previous color that I've done was. You're going to want to take it and literally tap it right on your gray only. So I'll show you what I'll, I would do. I'm just using the color that I'm going to use for my glaze because it's not going to do anything to my root. So if you're gray, you're always going to want to start where you're the most gray, where you part your hair at um, and in the front hairline. So if you part your hair right here, then you're going to start right here at the root and do not pull it through onto the color. So you're just going to be really gentle. You want to make sure to fully saturate it. You definitely don't want it not on enough where your gray is because then it's not going to cover properly. So make sure you fully saturate it. That's why we're starting in the front too. Like if you run out of color or something, at least you have this whole front done and the back is okay. Nobody's going to see that. Um, but you definitely want to start in the front because of that. And then also it's going to process there longer. So it will sit on longer and it's going to cover the most resistant part. So you have your touch up starting right here. And then you're going to go around your hairline first because this is where most people have their gray. And make sure your hair is dry. This is just my natural hair, so you don't have to worry about it like being straight or anything, just dry hair. So I would have it all around my hairline here and right where I part my hair at. And just make sure that you're fully saturating it so you can see how covered it is here. One thing you could do too is put, so that you're not getting the gray or the um, color all around your face. You can put like, we have a barrier cream at the salon, um, but you could use like, you could use Vaseline um, or just I'm trying to think what else you can use, like Aquaphor maybe, just anything that's gonna be like a barrier for your color to not stick to your skin. If it's a lighter color, it shouldn't be a problem, but if you are using a darker color, I would definitely try to protect it or at least just be like really gentle like when you're touching it up do not get it on your skin it's kind of hard to do that especially when it's on yourself but so i started right here on my part did my whole hairline here and then i'm just going to use sections to get this out of the way in the back this is not going to be perfect i cannot see the back i don't really know exactly how i'm getting this right now if you're um super blonde down here and you're just touching up your root just make sure not to get the root color like down onto this part of your hair. You wanna just make sure that you're staying like right at the root. So I'm holding my hair back like this and just touching up like that. I'm making like a section out of it so it's a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna start right here. This is a little bit harder to do on a camera too. So when you're at home doing it on yourself, just look in the mirror and try to get as close as you can. But basically I'm just taking small sections. The more gray you are, like the more resistant, like white gray, the smaller sections you want to take because if it's not fully saturated or you're not getting each section really clean and small, it's not gonna cover all the way. So you definitely wanna take everything as small as you can. I think the most important thing is saturating it the correct way and then or enough, I guess, saturate it enough that it's really on there and don't pull it down onto previously colored hair. You really just only wanna focus on that part that is gray. And I'm just using the back of my comb to section. You don't have to use your finger or anything. Um, just start like with this and then just lift that up and pull your next section down. So it's pretty easy. Um, if you have someone to help you at home when you get to the back, you can maybe have someone help you with that. That'd be a little bit easier. I definitely would have like my husband or something helping me with the back part if I needed him to do that. So if you have that as an option, definitely utilize that because it's hard when you get to the back, like you can't really see what you're doing. 
All right, so I have my whole root covered. Um, you can go through and check it too, like this. Just make sure you have everything fully covered. So I'm not gonna do the back just because I don't need to do that and I'm not gonna waste color, but basically you would do the same thing. Just start sectioning it like this. You can see like where that root is there. If you don't have to do the back, if you don't care that the back is touched up, then don't do it and just save that color. So what you could do is like just start out by only using half of this tube in only like one of your developer cups. Um, that way you still have some left over and then you could always use it again. You know, hopefully you won't have to use it again and hopefully we'll be back at the salon at that point. But if you do need to use it again, you'll at least have some left over and you can do the front if the back is too hard for you to get. If you can get the back and you want to touch up the whole back of your hair, then definitely go for it. Um, but it would be a good way to conserve color if you are worried about having to do this again. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, you'll definitely just want to get around your hairline really good. Make sure all of your sections are fully saturated and covered. I would go back through and check it. You wanna make sure that you're never pulling through. This is your gray right here, so don't pull the color through down onto the part that's colored. You should be able to see where that's at. Um, and then everyone has their own instructions. Most of the gray process is for 30 to 45 minutes. So on your card, it's going to say, 45 minutes or 30 minutes um or if you're doing a glaze it's going to tell you a different time too and then after that you'll just rinse it out um you can do it in a sink i'm probably just going to hop in the shower and rinse it out like that just because it's a little bit easier just make sure when you're rinsing it if you are using a darker color um or really any of these grays that i'm giving out you want to make sure that you're not letting it soak onto the ends of your hair so that's why I kind of feel like doing it in the shower might be a little bit easier than a sink because in a sink you're, it's, it just gets really messy. Um, so I would get in the shower and make sure you like hold your hair out of the way and just rinse out your root and don't let it sit onto the ends of your hair. Um, maybe put like a conditioner on the ends first so that it doesn't start. It's like a barrier to the color and it won't grab onto like porous ends. Um, but yeah, basically just like rinse it out really good, shampoo it and don't let it sit on for don't let the color like, emul like emulsify onto the ends because then that's gonna darken your blonde a little bit. So um, other than that, it's pretty easy. You'll process it, rinse it out, and then shampoo and blow dry. If you guys have any other questions or anything, just let me know. Um, and I hope that I'll see you guys soon. I think that pretty much covers everything for gray. Um, but if you have any other questions, just feel free to send me a message um, or an email or whatever works for you guys. I hope to see you guys soon. All right, so if you watched my other video, I have a root color on right now for my gray, but um, normally if you're putting on a glaze, this is the glaze video portion of the tutorial, um, you'll just start with dry hair. At the salon, it's usually on wet hair, um, but it's okay if you guys are putting this on dry. We just do it wet because at the point that we're at in the salon, your hair's wet after we rinse it out, um, but you can definitely put this on dry hair. Um, I think everybody that I'm giving a um, formula guide to, I wrote on there to put it on dry. So you'll put it on dry hair. Um, even if it's like, I don't think my hair is even like fully like dry back here. It's okay. Um, you don't want like half of it wet and half of it dry, but it's okay if your hair is a little bit damp um, because that's what we do at the salon anyway. So basically with the glaze, um, this is going to be starting a little bit differently because most people, you don't want the glaze to sit on the front here first like these front pieces, they're gonna take quicker than the back. And since this sits on for about 10 minutes, you don't want this part to be all processed. And then this back here, you haven't even gotten to yet because it's hard to do this on yourself. So it's gonna take a little bit longer. Um, basically, you don't want this sitting the longest because it's a little bit different than gray. You want this part to sit the longest. The back you don't want, or the, the glaze, you don't want that to sit on the front too long. Um, so basically, you'll mix it up the exact same way that I did in the other video. And this is where you'll start in the back. And on everyone's instruction guide that you get in your kit, it tells you um, to start in the back. So don't worry about remembering that. I wrote that on everybody's little guide. So basically this is how I'm gonna start my glaze. I have my bowl and my brush with my product mixed up. And this is really easy. You just, I mean, there's no like system to this really other than starting in the back and taking small sections it doesn't have to be like perfect like it's gonna like i would do it at the salon you know like in a foil basically you're just covering sections of your hair you want to take small enough sections though that you're able to like work it through like this like you can see that that's fully saturated there 
you don't want it. This is a good size section to take. So I'll turn around and show you like how wide that is in the back. You don't want it to be too big of a section because then you're not going to be able to fully saturate it. So I'm starting in the back again in case it sits on too long and this might take you a while to apply everything. The underneath it's okay if that turns a little bit too ashy or whatever the case may be for your specific formula. I don't think that that will happen for anyone because I have pretty detailed instructions like sitting it on for like seven minutes for each person. So I don't think it will be an issue. Um, but just start in the back just in case. Another thing too is if you have these like bright pieces around your face for a glaze, you don't, if you don't feel like you have to glaze them, then don't. I'm not glazing those because um, I like how blonde they are and I don't feel like they need to be glazed. So feel free to leave that out. And then I'm starting in this front part here again. Basically, you're just working from the bottom up. And that section I felt like was a little bit too big. So I just split it in half. It's better to take smaller sections with all of this, whether you're doing gray or a glaze. That way you're fully saturating and you don't have to worry about anything being uneven or not covered. And you can see how I'm kind of like working it in like this with my hands. And again, it is kind of hard to do on yourself. So don't be afraid or don't be worried if you're like not putting it on there perfectly. A glaze doesn't matter. It's not gonna look splotchy or anything like that with what we're doing. Like if you're doing this at home with a box color, it could look splotchy, but with what I'm handing out to you guys, there's no need to worry about it. Looking funny, like even if I forgot to do this whole section, like it would be okay. The reason why I am doing this too is so that people don't feel like they have to buy box color. Um, just because it's, especially with like gray and blondes, it's gonna be such a mess to try to fix that. Um, and it's gonna end up costing more money. And it's just, it's very unpredictable where like, like I was saying earlier, some of my formula guides that I'm giving out to people, they have like two different formulas mixed up where when you buy a box color, it's not like that. Like it's not taking into consideration what your natural hair color is. It doesn't know the percentage of gray that you have. A box color doesn't know how porous your hair is um, or like what your, even what your desired color is. <laughs> even though it says ash brown on there, it's it doesn't know what you need to get to an ash brown, if that makes sense. Um, like when I mixed up, when I formulated Tanya's color years ago, I chose to do 60 and 61 because her natural color is 100% gray. So she needs to have some 60 in there. And I put some 61 with it so that it didn't look too warm. Um, that might be like a foreign language to you, but that's kind of my point with box color. They're not doing something like that. Like you can't, there's no way for a box to know like what your gray is. That's why you'll see people that have box colored their hair and it's like like hot roots. Like it just looks like crazy brassy right here because it says, you know, pretty beige blonde on the box and it tells you how to apply it and all of that, but it doesn't know what your natural color is. And neither do you, honestly. Like um, sometimes I'll have clients say like, oh, this is what my natural color is, but it's not. Like whenever I go get the color finder, like I know what your natural color is and the only person that knows is your hairstylist. Um, so that's why, you know, if you do box color it, I totally get it, that's fine, but just know that it could be a color correction and it doesn't normally turn out okay if that's what you're doing. Um, so I think that this is good because you guys trust us at the salon and we can like individually formulate and give you guys like exactly what you're supposed to be using on your hair. Um, I definitely would not do this for highlights at all. That will never be happening. So just for great touch-ups and glazes. All right, so I'm on my last section here. And basically all you're doing is just putting this all over your head. You just wanna make sure you're fully saturating it. And at the end, you can even take everything and like work it through. like this. 
so yeah it's pretty easy with the glaze it's like like I was saying you don't need to worry about it looking like perfect sections and taking everything like in perfect little rows of color it's with gray you definitely want to be a little more strategic with it um, but with the glaze it's okay to just kind of put it all over and just let it sit you just want to make sure that you're fully covering everything and this is definitely messy so you want to make sure that you're covering up your sink or just protecting anything that you don't want to get color on all right so i have this all pretty much done here i'm just kind of like working it in like this and if you have any leftover color i have a little bit left so for my hair i used all of this um which most people who are getting glazes i think have one or two of these boxes here so i'm just using the rest of the color and yeah that's about it so i'm gonna let this sit on um i'm gonna let mine sit for 10 minutes you want to let it sit and air out like this you don't want to take your clip and like clip it up like that with anything like with gray or with the glaze um because then it's not getting a chance to breathe and you're like clipping it up especially with gray you could get like a line or um you just don't want to clip it up so just let it sit like this for 10 minutes um or whatever your card says some people say seven some people say five um so yeah i think that's pretty much it you'll let this sit for however long you're supposed to and then you'll rinse it out and this would be a good time to use like a deep conditioning mask too um but yeah i think that's pretty much it for the glaze and the root color if you guys have any other questions or anything just let me know okay so i totally forgot to mention that if you're um doing the color don't wear a shirt that you have to pull over your head because i just got out of the shower with my glaze on and i had to pull that shirt over my head and it got all over my shirt so wear a shirt that you can take off easily um something that's not nice but something that you can like pull off um or like unbutton or something because if not it will get all over your shirt